Hello friends, welcome to a course Threat Hunting in Cyber World. So in this part, we'll be looking at Threat Intelligence. So what exactly is Threat Intelligence? Threat Intelligence is data on threats. So the Threat Intelligence are basically feeds which you receive in the form of URLs, files or domains. So how are these three feeds being calculated or generated? Basically there are various research companies which work on any kind of latest threats or attacks and they try to generate or find out any kind of indicators of compromise of those threats. So those indicators of compromise are in the form of some URLs, files or domains. So how can threat intel be useful to us? It will be helpful to us to perform intelligent hunting. So IOCs of attacks or threats are generated by various research companies as I said. So these indicators of compromise are basically a result of various uh, security researcher which research any kind of threats or attacks which is there in a, in, uh, in a recent uh, cyber world and then they try to find out any kind of uh, output out of those research which is in the form of URLs, files or any kind of malicious domains. So how can you get a threat intel? What are the various sources for that? Various articles which has been published online on the internet various security news where we get to know about any kind of latest attacks or threats that is a kind of threat intel for any kind of cyber security person a various apt public reports which has been published by various security researcher companies like semantic or trend micro it will have a lot of threat intel about any kind of attacks or threats and last but not the least twitter so there are many security researchers which publish their security research work on twitter so that will be a very important way to get intel out of those security researchers hard work. So threat intelligence plus threat hunting will give out the output as intelligent hunting. So basically in addition to indicators of compromise there is some other term which is also known as behavioral indicators. So nowadays uh, malware or the attackers are very intelligent to bypass any kind of security devices which we have. And they do know that we'll be using a threat intel based on our threat intelligence researcher team or threat intelligence researcher vendor. So in order to bypass those, they usually uh, do various kind of uh, domain generation algorithms or something like that, which they generate and then they try to bypass all those things. So in addition to focusing also on the threat intel part, uh, which is more static in behavior, we'll also focus on the behavioral indicators. So the behavior of a malware, how, or how a, any kind of malicious software behaves in an environment, that is more of a specific threat intel which we can use to hunt in our environment. Threat hunting is effective by proper intels. As I said, we need to perform threat hunting, but it should be more effective. So to perform proper effective threat hunting, your threat intel should be also very effective so that we can be moving ahead to our threat hunting program. So threat intel team proposes any kind of new intel. Our cert team basically builds the hypothesis out of it and create detection based on the intel. And threat hunting team hunts with or without any kind of intel. So as I said, uh, the threat hunter needs to be well versed with any kind of new attacks or any kind of team intel which is there in the cyber world. And based on those intel, even if there is any kind of threat intel team or a cert team a hunter needs to perform a hunting so what are the various vendors in the market for threat intelligence like cisco talos is there palo alto unit 42 is there the silence have the threat intel team which they release in the form of threat intelligence feeds alien vault otx platform is there where we have indicators of compromise malware information sharing platform yara rules and many more so basically threat intelligence is a kind of intel which we get from uh, various security researchers team and we can incorporate those intel informations into your SIEM or log management solution and once you combine or correlate your normal rules with the help of this intel we can get an actionable output out of those. So that's the usefulness of threat intelligence in the world of threat hunting. So quickly let's look at various platforms. Yes, so we have a malware information sharing platform. It is an open source threat intelligence platform. We can use various uh, 
APIs which we have for this MISP platform and you can uh, basically uh, just incorporate this into your SIEM platform. We have virus total as well which have uh, tons of data for threat intel. As I said Yara rules. So Yara rules do have multiple uh, description of a malware like these are various versions or families of malware and basically the Yara rules are a description of a malware based on its signatures or based on a string value or something like that. So that's a very important rule which you can use or incorporate into your uh, hunting platform. In addition to this, yes, we have various indicators of compromise list which is available by the hard work of various security researchers. This is one of the IOC list which we have. So as is like we have Loki IOC list, we have FireEye, we have so FESI report, each and every. So as you see, I have said there are various domains ip addresses over here which are indicators of compromise so these indicators of compromise you can actually uh, correlate this in your siem or log relation uh, tool or you can set an alarm that any kind of traffic if generated or destined to this kind of platforms you need to just generate an alarm out of it so these are the various kind of indicators of compromise which has been released by our security researchers day in and day out. So that's the work of a malware analyzer, analyzer. So malware analysis is a job where they do analyze any kind of threat or a malware and they come out with some indicators of compromise. So in addition to the normal indicators of compromise where you have URLs, files or domains, we also need to focus on a behavioral indicators where how does a malware behave. An example would be a single file which is coming out from Outlook. Once you open that file, that file will be a macro enabled file. So it is get opened on your word office. And after that, those macros once enabled or once run uh, using double script process, it will generate, a, it will execute that VB script. And after that, that VB script will tell an order to execu execute PowerShell command or a PowerShell prompt and then they will be using any kind of other threats such as maybe cats or any kind of commands after that once you have a powershell so that's the behavior of a malware that's the any kind of malware or a macro based malware where it will be using vb script or a vba script to execute command prompt or powershell prompt and then execute the task distinct task so that's how you will be able to perform threat hunting using threat intelligence. It would be an intelligent hunting because you will be having an actionable intel data out of the various research and hard work of various companies and then we will be going ahead with our threat hunting. So that's all for this part in our threat intel. So uh, I hope you're liking this video series. Thank you very much. Bye bye.